All right, boys, we are back, and it's time to head into the year seven season with our San Jose Sharks. We're still in the year seven off season, but I want to uh, get at least one month of simulating done in this video. I know I don't have too much to do. In the last video, we got the re-sign stage done, and we had the big draft where we said goodbye to Jamie Benn and said hello to uh, McFarland, our first overall pick. Um, but also, before I get going, you guys said that, uh, I said that in the last video I'd show you the... The guys who got drafted second, third, and fourth overall, whatever. Um, I actually forget the teams, though. I think St. Louis was one of them. Hang on. It'll be easy to find. I'll just go through them all. Uh, there you go. Oh, holy crap. Pete Walton. Left wing playmaker. 82 overall. Yeah. So, remember when I was saying that this guy was actually listed as number one before McFarland, wasn't he? And he's got the same potential. He's 82 overall. He's a playmaker, though. 20 years old. Let's see his stats here. Uh, okay, so he doesn't have the good shot, but he's a playmaker. He's got a really good puck skills category. His passing's already up there. His offensive awareness is already up there. He's a good faceoff taker for a left winger. He's a good skater. Yeah, you know what, man? Oh, I kind of wish I could go back and get that second overall pick now. How perfect would that have been to get McFarland and Walton together and let them grow? You know what I'm saying? Because the, uh, the center sniper and the left wing playmaker... That would have been nice, but you know what? I mean, that's that that is overkill. I would have had to trade like uh, Logan for uh, Walton. So that's a, that's a pretty good pick right there. I think Philadelphia was another one. All right, so Philly. Uh, no, or oh, do they have a goalie? Hang on, they might have they got that goalie. Yeah, okay, they got that goalie. Castungui, only four star potential goalie, so nothing special there. We've seen those. Uh, Toronto, I think, was one as well. Do they get a goalie or was it Toronto? Uh, hang on, I'll go through the teams here. Uh, no, it wasn't Toronto. What other team was it? LA, LA. LA was one. I believe. I think LA was one. Hofflin. Oh, wait. I'm goalies. Rookie skaters. No, not there. Damn it. Where was it? Oh, man. There was so there was another team there. I didn't write them down. I thought I could remember them. I'm an idiot. <laughs> okay, I'll just go through the teams here. We don't have to look for the goalies. I think that casting guy, the guy who was on Philadelphia, was the only, uh, was the only goaltender that was up for uh, grabs. So we'll just go through the rest here. Chicago, no, and actually we can, you guys might be able to spot some young rookies that in the future we might have to pick up, so all this will actually be pretty good. We are going to get some uh, simulating done though, don't worry. Alright, keep going. Hennessy, he was one, wasn't he? Jesus Hennessy, all oh, right, because they already signed him, right? I, I'm, I'm flipping through these. Yeah, Jesus Hennessy, there you go, uh, by Anaheim. The other guy was like Caesar something, yeah, I remember. Okay, I'll just go through his, uh, I'll look for him. That guy looks pretty good. Who was that guy? Jesus, what is he? Right wing, playmaker, Yuka Lawin. When, when did he get drafted? Second overall, 2017. All right. Uh, keep going here, Washington. I'm trying to look for that C. I forget what his last name was. Damn it. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. He was a skater, though. He was definitely a skater. I'll just go back to, uh, there's St. Louis again. Hang on. McFarland. Okay. Uh, Puglia, no. Domi, no. Ah, oh, man, I don't know where Caesar is. All right, well, that's okay. I don't think he would have been anything special. Caesar, Caesar. Oh, what was his name? Now we're gonna we're gonna stop. All right. So you can see the uh, the other draft picks that we had. I don't think we missed out on too much with uh, Jesus Hennessy. He was like seventy. I mean, uh, four star potential, and also that goaltender that um, what was his name? Castanguay that was on the Philadelphia Flyers. That wasn't anything too special either. Just, oh man, I, <laughs> Caesar Lemieux, that was it, yes, Caesar, it was the LA Kings, oh my god, I didn't realize it because I thought, right, because I normally look for skaters that, uh, that aren't signed yet, and because we're already in the free agency, they signed them, so there's Caesar Lemieux, he's 72 overall, four star potential, okay, so I think we got the right pick with McFarland, but I also think that the second overall pick, Walton, I think that's somebody that we should keep an eye on, he looks like a pretty good player. So, when it comes to the players that we got to re-sign, uh, you guys said definitely get this player. And also, he could be somebody that could take over for, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Jack Campbell, our backup goaltender, if we want to trade him, right? We don't need to trade him this year. I'm not going to trade Jack Campbell this year, but I'm just saying. So, I'll give him uh, three years at uh, 9 .4, 0.95. There you go. It's alone, and a lot of teams want him, actually. Uh, is there any other potential goalies we can snag up here? Wouldn't mind getting a few. Uh, 25, 26 years old. How good are you? Uh, 77 overall. I wouldn't mind that guy as a minor league starter. Festerani. Uh, does he want a two-way deal? Yes, he does. Yeah, I'll give him that. There you go. Very nice. 
All right, defenseman. Now, I think we came to the agreement that we don't need to sign any of these players. I don't need a big contract. I don't need, like, 4 million, 4.6 million. No, we have, we have the depth on our team, and I want to use the same defenseman as we had last year. I wouldn't mind signing some, uh, you know, two-way deals or guys who have, like, uh, 1.4 million, like this guy, Justin Falk, wouldn't be a bad one, just for some depth. But uh, before we do that, let's just get the uh, potential players signed, okay? Uh, nobody really here. No, I don't want any of those players. And then forwards, any good potential players? All right, so Thomas Jerko, you guys were saying give him a chance. See if he jumps up this year, 2.1. I'll give him a one-year deal. I know it's uh, a little bit steep for a one-year, but I don't want to sign him to like a two-year if he doesn't jump. Okay, so one-year deal, and um, he's not going to be playing on our team. So it's somebody that we can maybe trade around the trade deadline if he does get that jump, all right? but Or, I mean, he may fit on the team. Two years? You know what? I'll give him two years. I can move a two-year deal. Yeah, yeah, I can move that. All right, 2.5. I want to save money, but somebody might else. 2.35. Yeah, I can move that. There you go. I can afford that. All right, so Yurko Nieto. We're going to bring him back to the San Jose Sharks. I'll give him a two-year uh, two deal as well, 1.65. There you go. Uh, Koffler, Jay Koffler. He's 23 years old at three and a half star potential. Yeah, that's a that's a good stock the shells kind of player. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There you go. This is what we need. We need a bunch of these players. Yeah, we need both these. Ah, 25 and 25. Ah, they're yeah, they're all right. 25. Two more years to get better. Uh, he wants the two way deal. So yeah, I'll give him a two way deal. At there you go. Three years. We can all we can afford these guys. And this guy Saku Malainen. Main Alainen. Main Alainen. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, three years. No, he doesn't want the two-way. I'll give this guy the two-way deal at one year, though. There you go. All right. So those those players signed. Uh, is there anybody else with three and a half red star potential that is, I should pick up? This Tyranny guy, but yeah, he wanted the um, nah. I will, I, if I'm gonna spend one-way deals, I'm gonna get better players. All right. Yeah, that's everybody. Okay. So we've taken care of that. How many players under contract? I got plenty of space. All right, and a 15 million. So let's just sign a bunch of players here just for some depth. Player, I don't want to take these players. These players are going to be actual players for other, other NHL teams. But here we go. 27, 25, and 26 years old. Yeah, that works out. That's perfect. All right, so Conan, the Barbarian. Actually, he wants a little bit much. I'll get these guys. Yeah, they want the two-way deals. There you go. Derek Pouliot. Oh, no, there's no way. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, there you go. I mean, uh, restricted free agents. There you go. That's much better. All right, so Conan, get on the team. One-year deal at uh, 1.2. There you go. I mean, I should check out the individual stats, but Emlyn, uh, how many penalties does Emlyn take? 74 penalty minutes. How many did Conan take? 74. Yeah, I'll get Emlyn. There you go. I'll bring him. 34 years old. Never know. Just some depth for our team. Just get them on the team. Conan, Gervais, bring back. I'll get uh, Sproul. No. Gustafson, no. Gervais, should I bring back? Yeah, I'll bring Gervais back. He's got a decent defensive category. There you go. All right, so there's three defensemen for us. That's all we need. And then forwards, same thing. I don't want any of these players. I know there's some good ones in here, but you know what? We already have the 12 players that we need. I was thinking Dan and Terrell wouldn't be a bad one just because the defensive categories. And uh, if Trevor Lewis, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting Dan and Terrell. Even though he's an actual player, I mean, we don't have to play him, but I think this guy actually might fit into our... Uh, our, our team right away. So I'll get him, and then everybody else will be uh, other players. Like Rich Peverly, I saw some people, but I knew that this guy wouldn't be a good choice because 36 years old, three-star potential, that drops. Uh, definitely a good player to pick up, but uh, I, don't, I don't like the age. And we're already getting Larson. And, I mean, no, we're already getting Yurko, right? So Johan Larson, should I pick up as a sniper? Yeah, I'll pick up Larson. Maybe some uh, goal support if we need it in the uh, playoffs if we get an injury. All right, and then uh, a Brodziak. No, I can't sign Brodziak. He's too in. No, no, no. I need guys who are going to stay. Peter Hollins, he's a playmaker. No. Ooh, he's got a 88 for offensive awareness. No, I don't need him. Depth four. You know what? Yeah, that's another guy I'll just sign. He's a not a bad little player. I know, I know the comments. Oh, the Leafs. <laughs> uh, Kuhlman, no. Klinberg. I need somebody now who's got a decent defensive category. Letestu. Uh, Drew Stafford. There you go. I mean, what's his potential like? Oh, yeah, Drew Stafford is a perfect player to sign. All right, so we'll get Drew Stafford on the team. This guy's going to be some depth as well. And then one more forward. Let's just find one more. We got Nieto. Uh, Furland, uh, stick checking. Now nah, let's get somebody a little bit better. There you go. John Pearson. Yeah. Let me just go down. Pulkin in. Again. Oh. Time again. Grinder. No, you know what? I'll get, uh, I'll get Yoen or John Person. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we'll get this guy's signs. 
Very good. All right, so there you go. There's free agency taken care of. We don't have any moves to make, any trades. I did see some good ones. I know a lot of you guys wanted me to trade Jack Campbell, right? But what do we go for right now? That's that's the thing. When you trade, you want something back, and I don't know what we're missing on this team. Um, hang on, let me just see if all these guys got signs. Yes, they did. All right, so we've restocked the shelves. We got $7 million, and we have 47 players under contract, so that's that's perfect. All right, we're not going to be trading any of them at the beginning of the season, but come trade deadline, that's when we can move them, and I uh, won't be affecting my, uh, what's it called, my uh, GM reputation. But what I was saying before is, right, like if we wanted to make that trade with Jack Campbell, no doubt he's got some good trade value, and no doubt, you know, I saw some uh, good opinions, trade Merrill, trade Jack Campbell, because they're going to drop, their overalls are going to drop um, at this year, right, so trade them right now where their trade values are, are nice and high. And I could do that, but, you know, that's just trading players, like, all the time. Every year you trade a player. Every year you trade a player just because his trade value goes up. His trade value went up because he had a good year, right? And if he had a good year, he can do it again. I want to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals. I think Jamie Benn was the big flop for us. And I hope that that one move, because now we can move up Boucher, and we have that other sniper, McFarland. now. I hope that one move, and also with all of our younger players hopefully getting better, uh, one of them being Ernest Shirelli, if he can jump, man, he already had a great year last year, if he can jump, I think we can come back and win that Stanley Cup. So to make that trade, what do we need? Do you want to get another top two defenseman? Do you want to get another first line forward? You know, I have players that are young that I want to uh, become better and I want to play them in those spots. I also want to stay consistent, you know, so another trade, it just seems like uh, a little bit too much. The Jamie Ben was a big one. Last year we had, you know, Joe Pavelski and uh, Blake Wheeler, you know, one thing at a time. I want to see what these young guns can do for the San Jose Sharks. And I'm glad that Logan is uh, gone nowhere. We need to keep Logan on our team. If uh, when uh, if we decide to blow up and make crazy trades, then Logan can go. But as of right now, it's still his team, and I don't want to blow it up. I like what we did last year. It sucked that the Stanley Cup Final ended the way it did, but uh, still, we can do something. All right, you know what? Let me just save it just so we uh, don't lose that. Hang on. Okay, so we're back, and a little bit of a bad thing happened. I uh, simulated it ahead. I wanted to get at least one month of simulating done, and I actually went past that. I went a month and a half in. Our record wasn't too good, but I ended up dropping frames, and the video itself went more than 30 minutes, and I was just thinking, you know what, screw it. I ain't going back and doing it again. It was only the beginning part of the season, so you know what? Not too much is lost. I'll try to get you guys caught up. It may be a little confusing because I forget what I said in the video. In the first part, that was fine before I said I want to save it, and that's why I save it, boys. Um, and then the second part, I know it was a good like 15 minutes that are just gone now. So I'll try to get you guys caught up a little bit. Um, I think where I left it before was right at the beginning of the year, right? Oh yeah, I gotta explain this whole thing again. McFarland. Alright, so we saw McFarland. You're not going to be able to see the player anymore because I decided to leave McFarland down in the CHL. I already had a huge freaking discussion about why I did this. Um, the reason that I left Anthony McFarland down in the CHL was because I do not want him to get the the uh, the plague. I do not want to see the red star potential. I know he's 82 overall, but when he was on the roster screen, he was still listed as a depth forward. So he's not supposed to be on the third line, the fourth line even. He's supposed to be a depth forward. A few games here, a few games there, right? So I thought, leave him down the CHL, and then when he comes up for next year and he'd be 20 years old, uh, you know, I want to turn this guy into the next Stamkos, the next Jonathan Drouin. I do not want to see this red star potential like we've seen for Shattenkirk, all right? Honka, uh, Cody CC, Reichel. I mean, I think I traded for these guys when they had the red star, but I do not want to see that red star potential drop. So that's the reason that I left him down in the CHL, okay? So I know a lot of people are not going to like that but you know what whatever and I know when we have bad seasons like we're having right now seven eight and one that's going to be the main comment but you know what uh, I want that guy to be the best sniper in the league, and if he drops the red star potential, man, that's just going to piss me off, so I'm going to avoid that. Now, we started off the year pretty good, but in the last five games, we've lost four, okay? Last ten games, I think we're 3-6-1, uh, and one. so we started off the year pretty decently. Just show you, 2-1, two, two and one. we were 4-1 and one to start off the year, right? And then the losses started. There you go, two losses in a row, two losses in a row, two losses in a row. So uh, I, don't, I, didn't know, I, I didn't know what to make of this team. Um, when I ended it, I wanted you guys to uh, comment on, um, it was the stats. Because Oh, you know what? Before I go to stats, let me show you the way that I set up our lines here. Are they going to be all over the place? Oh, man, they're, they're 
Hang on, hang on. I started changing these lines at the end because of uh, how we were losing, and I was just talking about what we could do. But what I did at the beginning of the season, let me just put it the way that I had it. Yeah, this is what I had. This is the way that I had the lines set up at the beginning of the season. All right. Oh, I didn't have Shattenkirk there. I had Merrill with Carlson, Honka, Shattenkirk, Falk, and CC offense. Kucherov, Logan, and Gallagher. Gallagher uh, sustained his 87 overall, and so did uh, Merrill. He's 88 overall, so they didn't drop. And uh, Kirby Reichel, DeCall, and Boucher because they had such a good playoff run. I wanted to keep that line together. Now, when it came to the third line, I remember what I said in the playoffs last year. Uh, Brendan Lemieux or Blake Lemieux, I wanted to give this guy the chance because he had a really good playoffs, and he's 78 overall, so play him on the third line see what he does for us, right? And I thought I'd give this guy Sundin a chance as well. He's 80 overall. He's listed as a depth forward, but he's got a really good offensive category. And I wanted to turn this third line into a good offensive third line with Blake Lemieux's really good shot, Sundin's playmaking, and Kyle Palmieri could be like the, the two-way forward that can handle offense and defense, right? And then the fourth line with Troy Brower, Dwight King, and Vladimir Sabatka. Show you the power play line as well. Show you the penalty kill line. There you go. All right, and also good news, Ernest Shirelli, he stayed at 87 overall. Don't worry, it's just uh, I have the automated goalie rotations off. But oh, it doesn't say it anywhere here. He is listed as an elite goalie now, okay? So we have that elite goalie in Ernest Shirelli now. And his stats actually ain't that bad for the season. I'll show you his stats quickly. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll show you the stats at the stat screen. All right, so we have automated goalie rotations. That's why, uh, that's why Jack Campbell is in the net right now. All right, and to show you guys how our team is playing... There you go. So we're 24th in the NHL right now. Goals for per game, we are 15th. So we're not scoring enough goals. All right, goals against per game, uh, 19th in the NHL. So that's not good enough. Power play percentage, uh, 22nd in the NHL. That's not good enough. Uh, penalty kill percentage, last, dead last in the NHL. However, we are one of the most disciplined teams. Okay, so it's it sucks, but it's also not the worst. We're not taking a lot of penalties, and with the worst, that would be really bad. Our home record, 4-4-1. Four, four, and one. Our away record, 3-4-0. Oh, and again, the last 10, 3-6-1. So we started off all right, and then we went on a little bit of a bad stretch. Uh, and also... You know, the reason I was, uh, the lines were a little bit different there was because you guys are not going to like what the first line has done for us. My first line when I started the year was Kucherov, Gallagher, and Logan Couture. And uh, you know what? They're just not getting it done. Let me show you. Forwards. All right, so that second line, Rude, uh, Reed Boucher and uh, Michael DeCall, 15 points and 14 points. Okay, so the second line is getting it done. Kirby Reichel, 7 points in 16 games. That could be a little bit better, but the second line I only want 50 points out of. And if two of them are point a game and one guy gets 50 points, that's a great uh, second line. And then Vladimir Sabaka, fourth line center, he's got 9 points in 16 games. He's our third leading point scorer. All right, and then you go down here, Logan Couture, 8 points in 16 games played. Zero goals, boys. Zero goals. So, I don't know what the problem is with this first line. I mean, if you look at Logan Couture's stats, he's got the shot that you need. It's up there. He's got the passing. You know, it's just, I don't know what's making this. He's not getting it done. And uh, Gallagher on the first line, he's got some goals, seven points, all right? Uh, I tried him out on the first line. He's been better on the second line. Maybe he would be better with uh, Reed Boucher and DeCall, right? But I just wanted to even it out a little bit. And Nikita Kucherov, I mean, he's got the five goals, but... First line just not getting it done. We need both lines to really get it done. But the 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 change that I was suggesting at the end of the last video was Blake Lemieux and uh, Stefan Sund or oh, Brendan Lemieux. Blake Lemieux, Brendan Lemieux, Jesus. Uh, Stefan Sundin. I got them to be some nice third line goal scoring, right? But Brendan Lemieux, I mean, he's got three goals, which isn't bad. All right, Sundin's got three assists. I mean, three points, which isn't bad. But they're negative players. All right, I was thinking maybe we should go Dana Terrell on the third line center and also bring up a third line left winger who's a little bit better defensively. Because if you go back to last year, we had Brodziak on the third line defensive spot, right? Or the third line uh, center spot. And he's more of a defensive player. So maybe that's a, a mistake trying to make the third line a little bit more offensive, you know? And then here's the defensive court. There you go. So no, but nobody's taking a lot of penalties, which is good. And Ernest Shirelli, 2.27 goals against average and a save percentage of above 92. So don't worry about his stats. It's just the last four games that hurt us a little bit. All right. So this is what I'm suggesting uh, or I'm asking from you guys. You know, what line changes should we make? It's too early on in the season to make any trades. Uh, we cannot bring up McFarland to the team, nor do I want to. Right. But uh, hang on, hang on. Is there Stafford? I think I already have. Yeah, I already have a full team. So the players that are on the team that we can use that I'm not using right now are uh, Dana Terrell. I could put him on the third line center position and move Sundin back down to the AHL, right? And if we wanted to replace Lemieux, 
We could replace him with, who is it? Oh, I have two defensemen, Gervais and Emlin. So I'd have to, I'd have to send one of those guys down. And we could replace Brendan Lemieux with uh, Thomas Yurko, right? I mean, he's a little bit, he's got a good defensive awareness, but he is a sniper. We've tried the, the sniper on the third line before with, uh, I think it was, I forget which year it was. And I don't, I don't think I liked it, right? So we got Yurko just because uh, the the star potential. But I was thinking he'd be more of a trade deadline asset to trade. We could also bring up Matt Nieto to the third line uh, uh, left wing position. All right, Drew Stafford or a uh, John Larson, Johan Larson, right? Because when you look at uh, Lemieux, here's his stats, Brendan Lemieux. So I mean, he's got the really good shot, but not much else. Puck skills is low. Uh, he's not a great skater. He's got a good body checking category, uh, offensive awareness, you know, but yeah, he's not much more. So maybe we meet, need more veteran NHLers on the third and fourth line for that depth. All right. So let me know what you guys think about that. I know it's kind of a shitty video that it got cut up like this, but what are you going to do? I didn't want to do it all over again. I kind of wanted to maintain this seven, eight and one record so we can come back from it. So line changes. We're no trades right now. The trade deadline will um, be when we make the trades, but um, when it comes to the when it comes to, oh, you know what? I forgot to show you this well, the uh, power play and penalty kill, because that was pretty bad. Uh, power play, it's the same on the five-on-five -five lines, right? So maybe we should get to call up on the first line for the power play. To call it Boucher, just tearing it up, right? And then the penalty kill, I mean, I tried going with our uh, defensive players, Reichel, Sabatka, King, and Brower. Maybe it's not working. But also, we're a very disciplined team, so maybe that's the reason we're taking the penalties, right? So I could put to call and Couture on the penalty kill. Maybe I should. You guys let me know about that. All right, and we're going to end it right there. I don't want to do any more simulating. We fell below 500. I don't want to fall too far below 500. So I need your help. What should we do with the lines? All right, because I want to try and come back. Maybe the President's Trophy is out of reach now, but I think it's still early on in the season. If we can get a right winning streak and get on the right track, we can definitely salvage this year. All right, so let me know, boys, and I'll see you in the next one.